It's hard to imagine a stubby, lumpy, drab-looking little thing that grows into grime could brighten your day, but research says certain types of mushrooms may improve your mood, cognitive functions, and stress management. Eddie D. Jamal's digging up info on the magic of mushrooms. You may have seen functional mushrooms and herbs perking up in popularity on social media because they have properties that turn them into something called adaptogens. Adaptogens can be a form of superfood, herbs, and functional mushrooms that really help balance your mood, support your energy, and so much more. We're taking a look at which adaptogens do what and how to use them with the help of integrative and functional medicine doctor, Bindia Gandhi. For starters, how do adaptogens work? Adaptogens need to be classified by three distinct things. First of all, it needs to be non-toxic. So it can be taken every day without side effects. It needs to impact all organ systems. It needs to cause homeostasis or balance in the body. They do this by supporting multiple functions in the body at the same time. Like your hormones, your testosterone, your stress hormones, your cortisol hormones. It helps with sleep. It helps with blood pressure, your mood, energy. Next. Let's take a look at some of the types and benefits. There's functional mushrooms and then there's herbs. One of my favorite adaptogens, for example, is lion's mane. She says this mushroom supports energy, mood, and cognitive function. I love reishi. It really helps support the immune system, but more importantly, it keeps you relaxed and calm. Cordyceps, another one. It provides a little bit more energy, a little bit more stamina. Then there are herbs. Astragalus is great for your immune system, supporting your energy. Ashwagandha, that's a good example. That's been used in Ayurvedic medicine for many years. Dr. Gandhi says it can help with sleep, blood pressure, and cortisol hormones. There's so many, and you can use all of them together, and they work wonderfully. You can grow these mushrooms and herbs yourself or find them online at health stores. Finally, ways to use them. Adaptogens can come in various forms. They can come in tinctures, which are liquid drops. They can come in supplement form, and they can come in powder form. She likes to incorporate them in things like coffee, smoothies, teas, and salads. But ideally, if you incorporate something like this daily, you want to be consistent. So while using them every once in a while may have some upsides. When you're eating it and consuming it every single day, that's when you reap the best benefits. But before starting any new diet, she recommends talking to your doctor first. Adapting to great health with adaptogens. With recreational marijuana legal in more than a third of the country, you may live in a state where it's easy to buy. But navigating the world of modern, factory-produced cannabis products can be complicated and intimidating. So Hattie D. Jamal has a grown-up's guide to mainstream marijuana. Recreational marijuana is now legal in several states. But experts warn you to take modern Mary Jane seriously. If we're comparing cannabis to maybe what my parents were consuming back in the 70s, it is far more potent. Faye Powell, Director of Education and Training for Item 9 Labs, has a quick guide to buying and using factory produced cannabis products. Starting with understanding the two main strains. They're typically divided into two groups. We have indicas and we have sativas. Both strains are intoxicating, but in different ways. Indicas are going to be a bit more sedating. They're gonna cause us to be more relaxed. We're gonna feel it through our whole body, give us the munchies maybe. And then sativas are going to be on the other end of the spectrum. They're gonna be more stimulating, help us be more creative. When I hear sativa in the way that you describe it, it almost sounds like a cup of coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. And indica almost sounds like the chamomile tea at night. Yes. You can also choose a mix of both. These are called hybrids. Another cannabis product creating a buzz is the sober cousin of THC, cannabidiol, colloquially known as CBD. It won't cause impairment like THC, the active ingredient in our indicas and sativas. THC is psychotropic or it can cause impairment. It changes our state of mind. CBD is not gonna get us high. An increasing number of people depend on it for relief from a number of ailments. Some people use CBD to reduce their anxiety, to help them sleep at night. A lot of people are finding that it helps a lot with seizure disorders, epilepsy, Parkinson's tremors. It can help with pain, it can help with sleep, and there's anecdotal studies that it says it can do more. Consumption methods wrap up our list. 
You can smoke it, vape it, or even eat or drink your favorite strain. There's many methods of consumption with cannabis. There's the traditional way of lighting up the flower itself. Then we also have vaporization, which can be done in many ways. We have these vape pens and cartridges. Then there's edibles, perfect for controlling exact dosage. And dosage, according to Faye, is the golden rule of cannabis. The most important thing is to remember to use conservative test dosing. We can always consume more, but you can't take any away once you've consumed it. Navigating the modern world of marijuana with the Grown Ups Guide to Corporate Cannabis. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Shaguna Dolo. Laughter is the best medicine isn't just to say, it turns out humor actually has a positive and tangible impact on our physical and mental health. Yes, yeah, so some seniors are taking a proactive approach. They are learning how to do stand-up comedy. <laughs> a look at how laughter can help us live longer, livelier lives is our featured story at the top of the list. Sometimes there's nothing like a good laugh to make your day. Laughter is kind of like the grease that you put in a gear of a machine to make it run more smoothly. Kim McIntyre, a joyful living teacher and certified laughter leader, says to get the most of a good time, avoid these three mistakes you're making about laughter. For starters, not taking laughter seriously. I recently saw an article by the Mayo Clinic recommending laughter for health and well-being. It's a real health benefit. You can get your health fix with various kinds of laughs. There's, of course, the polite laughter when your boss is telling a joke and you're laughing to be polite. Conversational laughter where little bits of laughter spark naturally. And then there's also a practice called laughter yoga. It's kind of like exercising a muscle, like lifting a weight at the gym, only it's a lot more fun. Next, you don't need to be in a good mood to laugh. We've all had experiences where you're feeling grouchy or you're feeling stressed out and something or someone comes along and makes you laugh. Which can instantly make you feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. And studies have shown that it's also really great for pain relief and letting go of pain and easing pain. You can also put yourself in a better mood by being aware of what makes you laugh. My best friend makes me laugh. So if I'm in a crappy mood, I'll pick up the phone and call her. The last mistake you might be making is assuming others have your sense of humor. You could unintentionally, with the best of intentions, offend someone, insult someone, or even just confuse someone. If you don't really know someone, be careful that your humor doesn't have a teasing element. Because you might just be kidding, but they may feel criticized. If you pay attention and know what makes other people laugh, it's the best gift of all. The shortest distance between two people is a laugh. The benefits of laughter are no joke.